Factor, the first name in beauty throughout the world, is happy to present Margaret and Barbara Whiting. Those Whiting girls. Look. Old style hairsprays can't give you curls that last. They just touch the top of your hair like this. But new Max Factor Curl Control goes down through all your hair like this and locks in curls. Here's proof. Ordinary old style hairsprays tell you to set your pin curls, then spray. But look, the ribbon is dry. The spray doesn't penetrate. It sits on the surface, can't possibly give you curls no matter what's added to it. Now watch. The same girl sprays curl control on first. Comb it through, then set your pin curls. Because only curl control contains protein polymist, only curl control is made to spray on first and comb through. Gives hair new body. Look, reaches down all through your hair and actually makes hair want a curl. That's why only spray first curl control gives you naturally soft lasting curls even in damp weather. Get curl control for curls that can last from shampoo to shampoo. And so this is Goodman Hughes, your old night owl MC, bringing to a close another Late Late Show. We hope you'll tune in again tomorrow night when that great classic Charlie Chan School Days will be shown again on the Late Late Show. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good morning. This is Billy Ross bringing you the early. Charlie Chan School Days. That was a great picture. I saw it four times. See, Charlie brings this teacher an apple, then he turns her in for accepting a bribe. Hey, you know it's ridiculous our staying up this late just to get a look at Margaret's boyfriend. You're right, Mother. Why don't you go to bed? I miss all the fun. <laughs> I prefer to be ridiculous. You don't suppose she's been going out with Floyd Henshaw again, do you? Could be. Floyd's a very nice guy. Oh, sure, if you can stand somebody who just sits there all evening cracking his knuckles. <laughs> Floyd Henshaw, human castanet. I always liked Floyd. I'll bet if Margaret ever saw him do his imitation of Fred Astaire, she'd change her mind about him. I didn't know he could dance. He can't. He does it with his knuckles. <laughs> be very logical and systematic about this. Now, let's ask ourselves how Charlie Chan would handle the situation. <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing. Margaret's boyfriend has 20-20 ears. I'm sure you don't mean 20-20 eyes. No, ears. She talks so low to him on the telephone that I can't accidentally overhear one word, no matter how hard I try. Here you are, Bo Brummel. <laughs> now, come on. Let's think of a way to trap them. She's bound to be home soon. Yeah, that's right. Mulholland Drive closes at two. <laughs> Let's turn out all the lights. Then they'll think they're alone. They'll think they're back on Mulholland Drive. Look, I'll get these back here and you two get the lamps. All right. Come on, Mother. You get this one over here. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. If we turn out all the lights, well, how are we going to see him? You know she's right? Yeah, maybe we better put him back on. Okay. <laughs> Cut that out, Eleanor. <laughs> there we are. Margaret! What are you doing here? I thought the Whitings lived here, not the vigilantes. <laughs> Margaret, we weren't staying up just for you. We just couldn't sleep, that's all. And what is this bottle of Stay Awakeys doing here? <laughs> Stay Awakeys? Well, I'll be done. We thought they were gumdrops. <laughs> I don't think it's very polite of you to bring your friend in the back way. You did bring him in, didn't you? Bring who? The man we've been waiting up all night to see. Oh, you mean Dan Simmons? Yes, that's right. Where is he? Well, by now, he's probably at the corner of Palm and Wilshire on his way home. Ta-ta. <laughs> Margaret, why won't you let us meet him? I don't see any reason for bringing a casual friend home to meet a family who's anything but casual. Maybe later on, when you uh, simmer down, I'll bring him around. But until then, happy hunting and good night all. Artie, you're being paged. <laughs> Margaret awake yet? Awake? She's already gone out to do some shopping. Or at least that's where she said she was going. How'd she have to get up so early? She didn't go to bed that much before we did. She went right to sleep. 
She didn't have any of those gumdrops. <laughs> I know what you mean. I was up half the night. Really, some of those silly schemes I thought of to trap Margaret's boyfriend just made me ashamed of myself, thoroughly ashamed. Really? Sure I did. Why couldn't I think of some clever schemes? Hi. Hi, Artie. Well? Hi. This is it. I have a trap for this guy Simmons that can't miss. What's your scheme? It's not a scheme, it's a trap. An elephant trap. <laughs> now look, we go in the front yard with a shovel, see? And we dig a big elephant trap, see? Now, when this guy Simmons comes walking along, he falls right down... Marty, please. Lion trap? <laughs> Rabbit trap? Post hole? Anybody want to buy a used shovel? <laughs> Why don't we just give him a third degree? Where is she? She's gone out to buy some new clothes. Though I don't know why she has things I haven't even worn yet. <laughs> For her trousseau, she's going to elope. She can't do that. I'd get cheated out of being maid of honor. You know, I, mean, I think I'm getting bored with this little game. Game? Eleanor, your daughter's getting married. You call this a game. Now, now, now. Let's not be ridiculous. After all, all she's doing is dating the man. I'm sure if anything gets serious, she'll tell us first. That doesn't seem right to me. She ought to tell the guy first. <laughs> we need a fresh pot. What time is it? Well, it's almost half past. Hardy, what are you doing? Shh. He'll hear you. They have ears like eavesdroppers. <laughs> Look, Frank Buck, leave it alone. <laughs> Miss. Just as well. $50 fine for hunting cuckoo clocks out of season. <laughs> oh, look, if it's the game warden, don't let him in. <laughs> hey, do you think somebody's been slipping that bird inside information? Oh, Mr. Price, do come in. Thank you, Mrs. Whitey. Hello there, Barbara. Hi, Mr. Price. I hope you don't mind, but it is daylight, and these little extravagances do add up. Give me our new business manager, Mr. Price. Mr. Price, this is Artie Grayson. Oh, yes. Hi. <laughs> oh, excuse me. You play the piano for Margaret, don't you? Oh, Artie does a great deal more than that for us. I even help with the worrying. Can I pour you a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Whiting. I just stopped by to bring some checks. No, thank you, Barbara. To bring some checks for you to sign to cover the monthly bills. Oh, that'll be fun. Hmm? Oh, yes. Now, I'm curious about this bill from your gas station. Is it possible you actually used 50 quarts of oil in one month? Yes, yes, that's right. You should have an overhaul. But I did. Did you get the bill from the beauty parlor? I mean, your car should have an overhaul. Well, the car didn't need the oil. I did. <laughs> and that was all your fault, Mr. Price, for giving me such a small household allowance. After all, I had to use most of it to pay Margaret because she loaned me the money to pay the dressmaker. Now, I knew, I knew you wouldn't want us to go hungry, so when I needed groceries, all I did was go down to the gas station and have them charge me for 50 quarts of oil, but I took the cash instead. <laughs> Mother's a very shrewd bargainer. <laughs> oh, yes, but I made them check my tires for free. <laughs> Mrs. Whiting, then we went to the, the store with the oil money to buy our groceries, but when they heard us say it was oil money, they insisted we open an account and charge it. It's with Barbara. And then with the money that we got from the empty pop bottles, we bought a raffle ticket at the fire station and won a $6 percolator. The way I see it, you owe him six dollars. <laughs> How long do you think it would take me to learn to play the piano? <laughs> Price. How do you like my robe? Oh, it's very nice, Barbara. I bought it with the oil money. Hmm? <laughs> yes. Uh, Mrs. Whiting, would you sign the check, please? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? No, that's all for you, but I had hoped to catch Margaret at home. Oh, well, you just leave hers with me. I'll see that she signs them. Well, that, well that's what I'm disturbed about. This one's already been signed and passed through the bank. She shouldn't sign $1,000 checks I don't know anything about. $1,000? Oh, that must be a Red Cross contribution. She's doing a telephone for them tonight. But this is made out to a Dan Simmons. <laughs> Let me see it, too. I'm the assistant warrior. Her signature, all right. How do you like that, a gigolo? <laughs> That's why she's been hiding him. What's this about her hiding a gigolo? It's Margaret's new hobby. You mean she 
always been giving money to a man. This family is too much for me. I give up. I give up. I'll come back when I'm feeling stronger. <laughs> Simmons carried their apart with my bare hands if I thought I could do it. Well, before you do, I'd like to get a look at him. Well, I'm going to get a look at him. Barbara Whiting, rookie schoolgirl, is about to become a detective. Somehow I can't imagine Barbara in a beard. <laughs> Maggie, at the conclusion of your number, I'd like you to introduce Dan Simmons. Well, I'll be delighted to. I certainly appreciate being on the telethon, Mr. Lockman. If you're half as good as Maggie says you are, I'm sure you'll wow them. Hey, no, no, no! <laughs> uh, now, Maggie... Mr. Lawson, what do you want to do with these sets? Lean them uh, against that quiz show booth over there. Now, Maggie, here's what we'll I do. I can't! There's somebody in it! <laughs> Charlie, I told you this afternoon we don't want anybody to get excited. <laughs> Maggie, you're really the one I'm grateful to. Except I feel like a heel for borrowing that thousand dollars from you. Well, don't be stuffy. You've got a big career ahead of you, and I'm not at all worried about getting it back. Oh, did you rent the auditorium? Yes. How much do I owe you for the announcements? I'll let you know when I find out. Oh, Dan, I was wondering, uh, would you do me a favor? I was wondering if you'd help me pick out a sport jacket for my accompanist, Darty. <laughs> See, it's our anniversary Saturday. We've been working together for seven years, and I haven't told my blabbermouth family yet, but I'm going to throw them a surprise party. Oh, and I ordered the cutest cake from the caterer. It's got two figures on top. One of Artie playing, and the other one of some blonde thing. You're one of the sweetest and kindest girls I know. Nonsense. I just like cake. <laughs> Society. <laughs> and my doctor. Maybe only a clue to you, Alan but to me it's it's Moby Dick, the great white whale. <laughs> All right, Captain Ahab, put down your harpoon. <laughs> Captain, hey, Captain Ahab, I don't want to get a hold of yourself. It's only me, Gregory Peck. Arnie, right, come on, be serious. I need somebody to talk to. Now sit down and help me with this problem. What problem? My problem. Eleanor, you haven't got a problem. Margaret's a grown girl, an adult. I'm sure she's thought out this Simmons guy very carefully. There isn't any need for you to even discuss it with her. That makes sense. Why does it? She's not so grown an adult that she can't be taken in by some smooth cookie with a big line. You know, a girl needs a mother's advice at a time like this. Then you think I should talk to her? When she hasn't even asked you? <laughs> what, about you? what about you? You've got pride, you've got feelings, and you know what else you got, Eleanor? What? You've got a problem. <laughs> Welcome back. Artie, if you ever get a chance to be a mother, turn it down. <laughs> I'm sure things will work out. You just have to have patience and strength. You're just too emotional about your girls. Now, just remember, behind every cloud, there's a silver lining, and it's always darkest before the dawn. Somehow, do you get the feeling I'm Judge Hardy and you're Mickey Rooney? All right, Artie, I guess you're right. I've just been making up things to worry about. I'll get it. After all, what evidence do I have? Just that she's been dating him constantly and made out a check for $1,000. That doesn't mean anything, really. <laughs> Package for Miss Margaret Whiting. Oh, thanks. I'll take it. Here you are, my boy. Sir, you gave me a button. <laughs> oh, that came off my shirt. I wondered what happened to it. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> Minutes. What do you want? Change for a larger button? <laughs> Don't get fresh. Here's 50 cents. Goody, goody. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Every time a messenger, a cab driver, a waiter sneers at me, I give them a very large tip. Do you think I'm insecure? <laughs> oh, the Esquire Men's Shop. Wonder what she was doing there. Oh, there are lots of things a woman can buy in a men's shop. Yeah, I guess you're right. You could buy a... <laughs> what have you got in mind? 
Cufflinks, that's what it is. Boy, did she run into a salesman. Hello? Who? Elite Catering Service? Well, no, we didn't order any. Oh, oh, you mean Miss Wiley. No, I'm sorry, she's not here. I'm her mother. Can I help you? You, you mean you misplaced your order for a cake and two figures on top? Well, no, no, I don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. You're welcome. Goodbye. Oh, boy, am I sorry I don't know anything about it. <laughs> no, no, Eleanor, don't go all to pieces. Suppose she did buy him a gift. Suppose she did give him a grand. Suppose she is going to marry him. If that's what she wants, then that's all that matters. I think you should just sit there and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> boy, do I have news for you. Well, you just get in line. I have a couple of bulletins myself. <laughs> Number one, she's buying him clothes. Clothes. And number two, she's already ordered the wedding cake. Wedding cake. Well, here's my flash. I found out where he lives, and his landlady told me he's an unemployed piano player. Piano play. Piano. <laughs> you mean to tell me that she's going to marry a guy that's going to play the piano for? Are you just going to sit there and do nothing? Or what are you going to do about it? This is terrible. <laughs> I'm George Fenneman with some wonderful news from Max Factor. You can get this Hi-Fi lipstick free. Yes, Max Factor's new Hi-Fi lipstick free. When you buy Max Factor's Hi-Fi fluid makeup in this special beauty offer. This is the new makeup discovery from Max Factor's research in color TV. Hi-Fi makeup with high fidelity skin tones to make you naturally lovely. In sunlight, in artificial light, in any light, day or night. Buy Hi-Fi makeup in the special beauty offer, and Max Factor will give you this 75 cent size Hi-Fi lipstick. Everything you've ever wanted, all in one lipstick. And it's yours free. This regular 250 value is only 175, the price of Hi-Fi makeup alone. This special offer is limited, so hurry. Buy Max Factor's Hi-Fi fluid makeup and get Max Factor's Hi-Fi lipstick free. piano player and I end up at the unemployment office. Well, Eleanor, you can't let him marry him. You just can't let her marry him. I forbid it. I'm the man around here. Cloudy, <laughs> for once I think you're right. Oh, Dan, I left the steaks in the car. Would you mind getting them, please? Favors, favors. Well, while I'm getting them, will you please make that phone call? All right, I'll be glad to. Well, family, I decided to end the suspense and I've asked Dan over for dinner. Margaret, I'd like to talk to you. Oh. In a minute, Mother, I have a phone call to make. I'd punch him right in the nose that my hands weren't so valuable to Maggie's career. <laughs> Hello, this is Margaret Whiting. About those announcements that you printed for me, uh, how much were they? Oh, I see. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, it came. Now, what do you want to talk to me about, Mother? How do you like that? What was that about us being the first to know? We'll be lucky if we get invited to the wedding. <laughs> Margaret. Margaret, marriage is a serious step. And as you know, I'd be the very last one to interfere, but don't you think we'd better sit down and talk this over? Mother, what are you talking about? We're talking about those clothes you bought for a cheap piano player. <laughs> And that thousand dollars he talked you out of. Oh. I see the Family Bureau of Investigation has been at it hot and heavy. But you better turn in your badges because this time you've come up with all the wrong answers. I loaned him money to finance a concert he's going to give. Now that explains the thousand dollars in the announcement. You're going to finance a concert? You never did that for me. Well, it just so happens he's a much better piano player than you are. Margaret! That does it! That does it! If that's the way you feel about it, then we're through. That's the way I feel. All right, if that's the way you feel. Are you sure that's the way you feel? <laughs> that's the way I feel. All right, if that's the way you feel. <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs> Margaret, I'm 
been shot. How can you be so mean to Artie? Mean to him? Well, I was going to give him a surprise party Saturday night, and, and I went out and bought this sport jacket for him. Does that sound like I'm being mean? Oh, oh, well, we thought all those things meant you were going to marry Dan Simmons. Now, look, Barbara, I'm mature enough to pick out my old friends. I'll go out with anybody I want to, and, and if I want to, I'll become engaged. Well, now, Margaret, Barbara wasn't trying to interfere. We were just shot. Well, I'm surprised at you two. Why, why, Dan Simmons is a wonderful person, and, and I'll marry him if I want to. Maggie, I don't believe it. <laughs> believe what? That you'll marry me. Oh, but, Dan, you weren't supposed to hear that. And... Well, what difference does it make who says it but first? Dan... I wanted to ask you, but I didn't have the nerve. But Dan! Oh, Maggie, you make me... Fourteenth hour of our Red Cross telephone. I'm very happy to bring to the microphone the talented and lovely Miss Margaret Whitey. Meanwhile, keep those contributions coming. I'll repeat the phone number. Great you. Five four one nine nine. Maggie, it's all yours. to a gentleman who doesn't want his name to be given, but he has contributed $500 for this worthy cause. He asked me if I wouldn't please sing a song especially for him. She's funny that way. Artie? I'm not much to look at. I'm not much to see. Just glad crazy about me he's funny that way when I hurt his feelings once in a while his only answer is one little smile I've got a guy who's crazy about me surprise for you. You're about to hear a great talent at the piano. He's a young man of modesty and real ability whom you'll hear for the first time tonight, but I promise not for the last. Now here he is, Mr. Dan Simmons. Good luck, Dan. Thank you, Maggie. Seven years, seven years. Has she ever asked me to do a solo? <laughs> That's a laugh. I don't even get a, an introduction. Artie, Margaret doesn't take you for granted. No. Actually, that cake and that box from the Esquire Men's Shop were for you. As an anniversary present after seven years. A seventh anniversary? Isn't that just like a man? I, I forgot all about it. Oh, Maggie, I feel terrible. Why didn't I know? Why didn't I have faith? Why did he get to do a solo instead of me? <laughs> Listen. That's classical. He isn't a piano player. He's a pianist. Oh, Maggie. 
Maggie, I'm sorry. I could kill myself. And I could help you. <laughs> Thanks to you, he thinks I want to marry you. I got an idea. Come on, Shorty, I got to make a phone call. Well, what do you need me for? When I find the booth, I'll need a dime. Oh, <laughs> Gee, Mother, what am I going to do? Well, Margaret, I think you'd better be perfectly honest with him. Ooh, you are a radical. <laughs> Just tell him that I can't marry him. Now, it worked with Floyd Henshaw, didn't it? I know, Mother, Maggie, but I was never... Maggie, Maggie, I have to talk to you. Well, Dan, I've got to talk to you, too. Uh, well, when I finished my number, there was a phone call for me backstage. A booking agent was so impressed with my playing that he's offered me a six-month concert tour of Europe. Oh! That's wonderful. But it means I'll be away from you for six months. Oh, uh, well, maybe it's for the best. After all, you have a big career ahead of you, and, and we haven't known each other very long. And when you get back, and we both feel the same way, we'll pick up where we left off. Oh, Maggie, it's wonderful of you to see it that way. Why don't we have supper tonight? Oh, no, I can't. I'd, I'd better pack my music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the fishing is still in season, so watch yourself. Well, we did it. Yep, we fixed it so you don't have to marry Dan. We call Floyd Henshaw. <laughs> Floyd? Floyd with the knuckle? <laughs> he promised to spend his evenings with you for the next month. Yeah, he promised that he'd chase off Dan by saying that you two were already going together. He's going to do his imitation of Fred Astaire. Maggie, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> And now a word from our other sponsor, Instant Sanka Coffee. When you think about it, take stock of the various things you look for in a coffee and don't kid yourself, really think. Then there's only one coffee for you. This coffee, new Instant Sanka. This is an instant fit for the man in the house. It has a hearty, really robust flavor that comes from 100% pure coffee. Instant Sanka is rich and full and good, and you can drink it as strong as you like. Drink five, ten cups a day, as many as you like, at any time you like, and still you'll be steady as a rock. How come? Instant Sanka, remember, is 97% caffeine-free, so it can't upset your nerves. And, of course, caffeine-free Instant Sanka can't disturb your sleep, either. So come on, huckle bug let's go. Instant Sanka, the hearty coffee you can drink as strong as you like, is waiting for you. Max Factor, the first name in beauty throughout the world, has presented Margaret and Barbara Whiting in Those Whiting Girls. Thank you.